Shalom Israel. Call Hall all your Hawa by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai by Shema Karkadash. This your King of Shepherd KD coming with another message of daily edification brought to you through the spirit and power. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All praises due. Um Man, a lot of information I want to get to y'all. Um <laughs> You ever get overloaded and you don't even know where to start? Well, that's me right now. Um, but let me, let me, let me show y'all something, man. Uh, got a couple of videos I want y'all to watch. All right. But this one here, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing, man. I just want y'all to see this shit, man. The shit. <laughs> this nigga had me laughing so hard, man. You know, Ham be doing some dumb ass shit. Look, 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 look at this shit, man. Watch this shit. Allez viens moi ça ne va pas. Je suis actuellement en train de chercher celui qui me poursuit toujours là. Parce que là trop c'est trop. Trop c'est trop. Même dans mes rêves, <rire> il vient. C'est trop la famille. Oh La famille un coca Regardez Un jus Qui a abandonné un jus là J'ai soif la famille. Nigga drinking a coke in the middle of the goddamn jungle. Yeah. Oh shit. All right, all right, all right, all right. Enough games. Enough games. Enough games. All right. Look, everybody. I want you to focus. All right. Now I'm finna hit you with the real shit. All right. I'm finna hit you with the real shit. All right. I just had to get that out the way, man. That little black ass nigga be tickling the shit out of me that ain't the only video he made too i'm like nigga you you didn't you didn't got chased like three or four times take your ass home i ain't gonna be out there in the middle of the damn forest somebody chasing my ass you know damn it's like he out there looking for somebody to chase his ass see if he get i want to see the video when they catch his ass that's what i want to see anyway y'all uh, uh enough of his ass uh that was a little uh <laughs> That was a little uh, 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 comic relief. All right, but look, this the real shit here. This the real shit. Now, I want y'all to listen to this shit, man. Video, I think maybe about eight minutes, but hey, it's worth the listen. And I'm glad they didn't take the shit down, dude. All right, now, check this out. Now, y'all told me, y'all remember what I told y'all yesterday about the oath that the brothers took and everything, right? And I told you to start uh, 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 preparing, right? Well, listen to this shit, man. Listen to this. Your timeline. Remember the dream that I told you guys that how great war was coming to America and a lot of people will be dying and suffering and certain people, the chosen people that was chosen by the Most High was covered and they had a symbol in the middle of their forehead. If you haven't watched that video, this is the one right here. Please go watch it. I didn't know what that symbol represented. So he knows about the ceiling. All right. And he's not the only one that's put this out, man. Even a Jaffite put it out there. He said, there's some men of the Lord somewhere that have been raised up. All right. Now, listen. I did not know until I saw this video in my timeline and it gave me a lot more clarity. There's something getting ready to happen when April hits of this year. And I don't think people understand how deep this stuff go. Now, I'm going to show you the video. And all I want you to do is listen and pay attention. Right? Ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because in the spiritual realm, it is very serious. And a lot of people are going to be dying in this hour. There's no time to be playing any games. I want to share this with you. So please pay attention. I'm about to roll the clip. Is God trying is to warn right America? using the sun and moon to mark the United States. Well, 
Let's talk about it. Okay, so August of 2017, we had this total solar eclipse that passed right here through America. In April of this year, we will have this total solar eclipse coming this way. In October of last year, we had the annular eclipse that crossed right here. So I understand this may mean absolutely nothing to you. This whole shape right here, these lines. But this right here is actually the first letter of the Paleo-Hebrew, which is the Aleph. Right here you have the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, first letter being the Aleph, right there. Let me show you this again, okay? So you have the eclipse, the Aleph. I will turn it around for you here, so it might be easier for you to see. So the early Hebrew depiction of the Aleph was actually an ox head. For this original pictograph for this letter is a picture of an ox head representing strength and power from the work performed by the animal. This pictograph also represents a chief or other leader. When two oxen are yoked together for pulling a wagon or a plow, one is the older and more experienced one who leads the other within the clan, tribe, or family. The chief or father is seen as the elder who is yoked to the others as the leader and the teacher. The modern name for this letter is the Aleph and corresponds to the Greek name Alpha, like the Alpha and the Omega. We also get the word alphabet from the Aleph. Okay, so what's the big deal about having the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet here over America? Well, that is not the only thing here. For you also have the last letter of the Paleo-Hebrew right here, the Tav. For the Tav represents a cross or an X. For you have the X across America with the total solar eclipse from August 2017 and April 2024 making the Tav. While also having a second Tav right here with the total solar eclipse in April and last year's annular eclipse. So you have two Tavs marking the United States with these eclipses. Not to mention how the Tav is the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So you can see the early Hebrew pictograph of the Tav are two sticks crossing each other. In Old Hebrew script, the letter Tav was written as a cross mark. Now the Tav is used as a marker. It is a sign of life or death. So the Tav was only used three times in the Old Testament, but right here in Ezekiel chapter 9, there's something very interesting. So the Lord tells the prophet to mark everyone who mourns over Jerusalem with a sign on the forehead, the Tav. The word sign is not the typical word for sign, but rather the name of the letter Tav, the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Those who exhibit the proper response are being marked with the Tav on the forehead. Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In the cursive script, it had the shape of an X or a cross, a form that remained essentially unchanged from the early stages of the evolution of the alphabet until the adoption of the square, Aramaic script. It is preserved to this day in the Western script as T. This was the basis for the church fathers concluding that the mark was the sign of a cross, and therefore a type pointing to those who were marked by Jesus. Block goes on to link the sign on the forehead to the blood on the doorpost at the Passover. We have the eclipse this year in April, right before Passover. Right. Hmm. The scarlet cord of Rahab and the sign Oat that marked Cain on the forehead. In each case, the sign is protective against an angel of death. Block adds, since in ancient custom, the law also served as a mark of ownership, the possibility that this mark represents Yahweh's signature. His claim on those who were citizens of the true kingdom of God deserves consideration. Y'all hear that? In a footnote, he points to Job 31:35, where the top represents a shorthand symbol for one signature. Though he believes that by Ezekiel's time, the mark of ownership would have been a lamed meaning belonging to. Okay, so I know this is a lot of information, but let me give you in summary in my opinion. So you have the Aleph and the Tav marked over America, which Jesus is the Aleph and the Tav, the Alpha yeah, and the sure. Omega, the first and the last. Since the Aleph is the first letter of the alphabet and the Tav is the last. So you have the sun and moon causing a marking over America through the eclipse 
that writes in Paleo Hebrew the Aleph and the Tav, the first and the last, Jesus Christ. The Aleph meaning leader strength, and the Tav meaning a mark or a sign. Now, you may think I'm looking too far into this, but I don't think so. I think this is from God, and he is warning his children. He's given revelation to his friends, like he gave revelation to Abraham about the destruction of Sodom. So, with this, we go back to Ezekiel chapter 9. Those individuals who were mourning over Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem, they had a mark of the Tav over them of protection. This goes back to the idea of the Passover blood on the doorpost, protecting individuals from the angel of death. Is this a sign of the rapture, potentially? Is this a sign of protection of God's people in America when destruction is coming upon America? Because we know that judgment is coming. The Tav can also mean life and death. So for those who are in Christ, we are protected. We have life. But to those who are not in Christ, have judgment and death coming upon them here in America. And for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, know that the king is coming and he is at the door. Judgment is coming upon America and upon an unbelieving world. And it is critical, it is crucial to get the gospel out, to love others, and to understand that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind to allow the fruit of the spirit to come forth. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Because when judgment falls, we want to make sure that those around us, those that we love, have the mark of God upon them. They have the Tav protecting them, that they are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise in the way that you are sealed by trusting in Messiah, trusting in Jesus, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. He has come to give you eternal life. He has come to free you, to deliver you from the wrath of God because he bore the wrath of God on the cross, on the Tav. So I love you guys all so much. God bless and remember the just shall live we're scrolling. You see me in your time. All right. <clears throat> Jaff it. Let me, let me, let me get a precept. This is Jeremiah 16 and 19. All right. Jeremiah 16 and 19. And it reads, O Lord, my strength and my fortress. And my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. All right. So, uh, 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 the Most High has given them a measure of truth. Everything he said wasn't wrong, but he was really wrong in talking about the rapture. There isn't going to be any rapture, but he was right about the Tav, all right, and the Aleph, all right. But see, it's deeper than that. Did y'all hear what he said about the ox? The first letter in the alphabet represents the ox, the Aleph, right? Well, let me show you what happens about the, 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 the ox and why the ox is so important. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Well, you know what I'm going to start at verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Look at verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people do not consider. That's a separation of the one-third and the two-thirds. The ox represents the one-third in this time. Right? That's what the Aleph is about. The Aleph, which is the 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 uh you know the 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 the, the triangle with the line through it, that 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 that's the ox. He was saying that we're the ox of this time that knows our owner. Okay. He's talking to us right now. And he was talking about uh, Ezekiel chapter 9, about go ye throughout the city and put a mark upon them that, that, that fear the most high. All right. And, and, and when the judgment comes, he's right on that about the mark of the uh, the top of the olive on the doorpost. Well, that's what was used in the last exodus. Right now, let's uh, move on to uh, the next phase. Um. 
It's in Genesis. All right. Genesis chapter 15. Verse 13. See, this is what's getting ready to come to a close in April. And he said unto Abraham, Genesis 15 and 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. That's what's getting ready to happen, y'all. This is why I told y'all this 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 week last week about us sealing uh, 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 the brotherhood was so important. Now, it, 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 are, are the brothers that came into the room the only ones that's going to be sealed? No. All right, all of y'all out there, ox and ox waff alike, that that um that trusted the Most High, that trusted His Son. All right, His beloved Son. Because you did that, this is why you understand this truth. This is why you are here. This is why you are listening to my ass, all right, almost every day, because your spirit resonates with the truth. Now, this is where we're getting ready to show all of these Moses law keepers what time it really is. All of you niggas on here scoffing, talking your shit about what we eat and all that, y'all getting ready to fucking learn, man. You are not going to be spared when this judgment comes. The most I going to put it, he going to push y'all shit all the way in, man. And I can't fucking wait, man. I can't wait. I, I, I can barely sit still now. All right. This April marks the end of our captivity. All right. So uh, 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 the last thing I want to show y'all. All right. Is. What's getting ready to happen. All right. Let's see, hopefully they didn't take the shit down. Okay, look. Look at what was shown in Kazakhstan. Now, I want y'all to look at this real good. See what it says? It says there are three sons, right? But look, they're not three sons. Look at the outline. Look at the outline, all right, on the outside. See, see, see right here, it goes up. That's Nibiru. You see that? That's Nibiru. It's blocking the sun out because it's so big. That's not three suns. These, these, these people don't know what they're looking at, man. Nibiru is here. This is the reason for all the extreme weather, all these floods. There's a pole shift going on. The north is going to be south. The south is going to be north. And there's a solar flare predicted in April. Y'all know what happens with the solar flare? All right. That's what's going to charge the most high's people. This is why it was so important for you not to take that fucking uh, booyah, man. Because the booyah lowers your vibration. It makes you, your whole DNA, all right. Uh, on a low vibration where you're not going to be able to get this 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 turn up but the thing is it's through faith though it's through faith if you don't have any faith in the most high it's not going to benefit you all right the most high is going to use this planet this planet in the bureau is nothing new it's been around for thousands and thousands of years it came three times it came during the time of creation it came during the time of Noah. This is what tore the planet up the first time. This is why there was a flood. The most I sit in the bureau through here and the gravitational field of that planet fucked everything up and is getting ready to happen again. All right. Now, third time coming around is here. Our Exodus. All right. Let me go to Joe uh, Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priests, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. 
The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled for the Lord has spoken his word. So ain't nobody getting away. Top or bottom, rich or poor, fat or skinny, tall or short. Everybody going to taste this judgment. Everybody is getting ready to get fucked up if you're not with the Most High. And if you're not Israel, all right? And if you're not uh, uh, Israel under the law of liberty, okay? Look at verse 5. No, verse 4. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. All you arrogant ass motherfuckers on here talking that shit, man. Y'all finna get it. Verse 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all are merry-hearted, do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth. ceaseth. The noise of them that rejoiceth endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the street. All joyous heart is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The crying for wine is the crying for the truth. All right? They're not going to have it. They ain't going to know what the fuck is going on. But you will. All praises. Verse 12. And the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. Then shall they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify you the Lord in the fires, even in the name of the Lord, power of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be shaken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. Verse 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The pole shift. Verse 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the, uh, the, uh, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun be ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. So that's what's coming, y'all. All right. He said that the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. He getting ready to shake this motherfucker down. Ain't nobody going to be laughing. Ain't nobody going to be laughing. Ain't nobody going to be snickling. All these bitch ass law keepers. Y'all, y'all, you motherfuckers finna get it, man. And those y'all that's left, y'all ass gonna be in slavery, man, for rejecting the Most High, all right? For the Most High and his son. You know, I was talking to uh, Benny Rich this morning, and uh, we was chopping it up for about an hour and a half. And you know, you know what we came up with? Like, y'all remember when Yahweh was on the cross, and he said, Lama, Lama, I mean, uh, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, Meaning that, my Lord, my Lord, why have thou forsaken me? You, you know what happened there? When it says that the Most High turned his back on Yahweh Shai, that's not really what happened, man. It's not really what happened. See, after we did this, uh, after we, we, we took this oath, the Most High has opened up some more shit to me that I could bring to you. The Most High wasn't turning his back on Yahweh Shai. All right? I thought that for the last 30 years. That's not what happened. The Most High... 
raised Yahweh Shai for his sacrifice, but he turned his back on Israel. I'm going to prove it to you. Let's go to Hosea chapter 5. Verse 14, Hosea 5 and 14. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away and none shall rescue him. So he did that. He did that by sending us here. Okay. Look what he says in verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early now he said in our affliction we'll seek him early meaning that when he puts the real truth out here we're going to seek him early y'all know when that was the real mister remember what happened what was written in the sky i went the only one to see it he says i am happier than ever it's the first time he turned his face back to us since he turned it away during the cross of Yahweh Shai, when Yahweh Shai was resurrected, and he turned his back on Israel pursuant to Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Now, how am I sure about that? What happened when he turned his back on us? We lost our identity. We didn't know who we was. We told we was Christian. We told we was this. We told we was Buddhist. We told we was Moors. We told we was that. All right? They had us confused. But now that the truth has came back into the world, we know who we are. And we are here in the royal house of David under the right doctrine, all right? Under the right precepts, under the right spirit, under the right law, under the right priesthood, all right? All praises and respect for the law of Moses during its time, but that time was done away with. Let me get a precept. This is Hebrews chapter 7, all right? Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 11, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood for under the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So he's saying the Levitical priesthood was good for the time it was in, but it's obsolete now. Look at verse 12, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Verse 13, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Right there, the Apostle Paul already outlined everything. But see, these fucking Pharisees still want to hang on to the law, and they're going to be part of everything I just read to you in Isaiah chapter 24. And you motherfuckers that live through it, you're going to wish you hadn't. Right? Because you're going to go into bondage and under slavery. But a lot of y'all are going to fucking die, man period and we're coming up on it we're coming up on it fast man coming up on it fast All right most high not playing we're gonna know soon enough if there's a king in the land or not we'll see if the people that rolling with me get delivered and y'all will all of y'all camp leaders leaders get destroyed we'll see if y'all make it out We'll see if I'm the fraud that you try to make me out to be. We'll see if I'm the 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 the, uh, the, the liar and the puffed up lunatic that you try to make me. All right, we're gonna see who get the last fucking laugh. All you camps out there, you motherfuckers feel that fear, man. We bonded. All right, and here's the thing: it's not just us. All right, everybody, every man that believes in Yahweh Bashem Amashiach Yahweh Shai under the law of liberty is going to be delivered that's the one third these men that were bonded and sealed with me that is the israelite imperial guard those are the men that are going to guard the throne for eternity hand picked by the most high and, and qualified chosen and sealed as of february 10th last week all right so most high not fucking around man the throne of david is secure Yahweh Shai got us 144 in the heavenly realm. Everybody's sealed and ready to go. We ready for this judgment. Are you? Uh, so, all of y'all have been snickling and laughing, especially you busters on here. 
uh, 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 cracking your jokes and shit, talking about what the fuck we eating. All right. We're going to see how important that is real soon. All right. Our captivity is ending and the clock is ticking. All right. I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Y'all stay tuned for the next video. KD out. Shalom.